guys and welcome back so today we're going to be unboxing one of the newest colors of the origami dripper it's the beige dripper so i wanted to just quickly go over some of the colors that we already have in stock um, and some of the sizes and just talk about these fantastic beautiful products so first of all this is the small size um, we also have the medium size although the medium size can brew up to four cups while the small size can brew up to two cups so the two cup size is a lot more popular at the moment um, and as you can see just the size difference not too crazy different but it does definitely help um, when you're brewing it really does help um, because sometimes the kettle spout can actually uh, click onto this onto the side um, and it can either disrupt your brew or it can topple over so if you're doing you're trying to get closer to the bed um, it can definitely so if you're trying to get closer to the bed sorry about that trying to get closer to the bed of coffee and you're brewing um, when you do that uh, and it does cling it can be um, it can be a lot better when you're using a O2 size stripper. Cool. So as you can see, I've got four colors with me. I've got the white. Um, all of these are glossy and they've also got the branding on it as well. I've got the black. These are a Minoyaki porcelain. So it's a very lightweight ceramic and that has the origami dripper logo just there. I've got the turquoise color with the white around the edge. So yeah, feel free if you have any questions at all, just jump in and I'll get to it. I've got the pink color. Again, this is glossy. And we're going to be unboxing our newest color to arrive. How's that? So, let's get into it. This is the beige dripper. This is the um, two cup size. And it's matte. So it's got a beautiful matte finish to it. Sort of like this yellowish sort of cargo looking, almost militaristic sort of vibe going on. <laughs> It feels almost powdery. It's really strange, um, but this is going to be our newest stripper, um, and I'm excited to have a couple of brews with it and um, see how it goes. Again, with the branding on the side, and all of these drippers, guys, they come with the ring. So they actually already include the ring, the base that they sit on. So this is a resin base um, and it just, yeah, it works really well because the dripper can sit onto this and it just falls directly into place and it's perfectly aligned. So there is also a wooden base, um, but the wooden base is, it doesn't have these little um, dints in it. So when you put it on, it can actually go like that um, and twist. So that's actually quite problematic. So when you have this on your brewer, uh, excuse me, on your server, you won't have any issues with it tipping like that because it just falls straight into place every single time. One thing to note is obviously they're not connected. So with a V60, if you're um, using a V60, it's connected to the base. So when you pick it up to either swirl or to remove it, you've got to be really careful that you actually hold on to both pieces or you just take off the top one and leave it on the server. Cool, so I'm going to take everything aside and we're actually going to brew with our new one. So I've already just made up some water, put it in the kettle, pop our server on top, 
Guys, if you have any questions at all, feel free just to drop a comment and I'll get to it. All right, while that boils, I'm just going to grind up some coffee. Let's move all that to the side. Got the Akai Pearl 2021 scales. And we're going to be using, not this one, but we're going to be actually using this one. So this is a Costa Rican coffee. It's um, from Tin Man Coffee Roasters, delicious coffee. Um, and yeah, it was fermented for four days. Um, and yeah, it was roasted fairly recently. I've been enjoying this a lot. <laughs> it's nice and fermenty, whiny. Let's give it a crack. So we're going to weigh out 15 grams. One bean for good luck. So with these origami drippers, you can use two different types. You can use the conical filters. So this sort of filter will actually um, sit up against the folds of the origami dripper and it will create a much quicker drawdown just because of the bypass. Or you can use something like this, which are the Kalita filters. So these actually hug the walls and it's a much slower brew altogether. We're actually going to use these today, um, but we're not going to use the four cup size. We're going to use instead the two cup size. So I'll get that now. We're going to be using paper filter today. Pop this aside. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to fold over the mountain fold, the edge, fold that over, open it up, push it out a bit. Hey guys, welcome. And now that we've got our filter like this, we're just going to pop it in and it will sit perfectly. Look at that. All right, we're going to add a little bit of water to our beans. I'm going to change, I'm going to quickly adjust my grind size and see where I'm at. So I'm going to go all the way fine. One, two, three, four, five. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's do 20 clicks. Give it a quick shake. And I'm just going to grind this through, but before I do that, I'm just going to pre-wet my filter because this water's ready. So I'm just going to run some hot water through my filter all around the edges. And there we go. Let that drain out a little bit while I grind to some coffee. Guys, if you're enjoying this so far, feel free to share the live stream or give it a like or just say hi. <laughs> it's lonely. All right, so just grinding the coffee, coming to an end. This is the Commandante MK4 American Cherry, so it's super smooth, super easy to brew, uh, grind with, sorry. Now that's all done. All right, I've got just to align this a little bit better. 
And there we go. So as you can see, the filter is propped up against all those little ridges. So when you brew, the amount of space is going to act as massive channeling or by well bypass, not channeling. Um, so it creates a much faster brew. There's a lot less contact time. Um, and this lets you achieve a different style of brewing, pretty much. Pop that there. Um, now that I've got our water in here, it's hot water and it's wastewater. I also use it just to clean everything from my last brew. Pour that into my cup. And now that way I can use the same water to preheat my cup. Oops. All right, let's get brewing. Got our, our dripper, our filter, teared everything out. It's on top of our server and we've emptied out our, um, uh, excuse me, we've emptied out our vessel, um, the water, and we've ground our coffee. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Oh my God, it smells amazing. So fermented, I think it said four days, Costa Rican, Geisha, good stuff from Tin Man. All right, let's pop that in. That's our 15 grams, 15.1, close E enough. All right, take all this out of the way. Now, some people like to do a little divot at this stage. Um, so they actually put their finger in or little spoon, whatever. Um, I didn't even like coffee, but I want to know how this turns out. It's going to turn out bussin', my friend. <laughs> so 15 grams. Now we're going to go in. As soon as we start pouring our water, we're actually going to start the timer. And we're just going to dump in 50 grams. 51.5. I'd say that's close enough. So we did 20, 20 clicks on the Commandante, so it's relatively quite fine. Um, all right, wait for that to drain, uh, drain down, draw down, 30 second mark. We, I'm going to start my second pour. And I'm just trying to aim for that consistent movement. 100 grams, it smells delicious. So as you can see, if I'm always dosing anywhere from 15 to 20 grams and I'm doing multiple pours, multiple stage pours, either three pours or five pours, this is the perfect size to do it. The other size, it can be a little bit too big and you end up wasting the paper filter. And when you're pouring and you're trying to get close to that bed like I am now, for a much slower control pour, your kettle will come into contact and nook it. And pretty much every single time that I was brewing with the medium size, I'd hit it and it'd disrupt the bed. Mainly it would disrupt me, but it'd also disrupt the brew. <laughs> Wait for that to draw down. So I'm just doing five pours of 50 grams. Um, and that will get me my 250 grams of water. I can really do that slow pour. And I can absolutely have much better control over my flow rate, my water's flow rate, and just overall how well the brew goes. And yeah, as you can see, it's um, if I was using the Kalita filters, I'd probably go a little bit coarser just because it's um, starting to you know, choke up. It always chokes up towards the end, that's just the nature of these sort of brews. Doing pour over coffee. This is my final pour 250 grams. There we go. Good enough. I'm going to wait for that to just come down a little bit more. And my final little swirl. And I'm going to let that sit, drain down completely. Guys, if you have any comments, questions, let me know. Oh. We're going to wait for this to cool down a little bit. I'm going to try it. Taste the coffee with you. See what it tastes like. I'll get the bag of coffee again. 
If you're interested in purchasing one of these, we got them on our website. They're quite popular at the moment, a bit hard to get in. So, three minute brew time total. Not bad. I'm actually just going to come over on this side and get rid of this real quick. And I'm going to throw this out. There we go. Good old pour of a coffee. Let's weigh out our yield. So that was three minutes. So not too bad. Could have gone a little bit finer. I reckon this is still relatively a, um, I believe this is a relatively fresh coffee. 218 grams. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, I'm genuinely curious about it. That's how I started too, my friend. <laughs> Do you normally have pour over coffee or what, what's your go-to? Do you ever make your own coffee or you just, I don't know, go to cafes, take away coffee? This is the coffee that I'm using. So it's Costa Rican, La Chumeca, Terrazu. So that's the, um, where it's from, the farm, I believe, and the region. And then Red Katuai, so that's the, um, just here, Red Katuai. That's the varietal, so it's not geisha, excuse me, I did say it was geisha before. We've got natural anaerobic fermentation for four days. Fermentation in tanks and dried on raised beds. So it's all pretty standard, nice boozy characteristics. Notes, Tangelo, Lemon Sorbet, Sauvignon Blanc. I think I said that. Very fancy. Tin Man Coffee Roasters, guys. They're really cool. Uh, just going to wait for that to cool down a little bit more. If you have any questions about the origami drippers, let me know. I'm really liking the look of this matte one. It's pretty dope. It feels, it feels really good. I thought it would feel funny. Just like powdery, but it's not. It has a really nice texture to it. And it looks very similar. Like It looks exactly the same, to be honest. Maybe in different photos. I want the pink one. The pink one, that's what I started off with. We've got heaps of the pink ones if you want. <laughs> this is actually made by the same company, these cups. This is, this is called the Origami Sensory Cups. Hopefully we'll get them in as well. Uh, just taking a little bit of time on these. I can't show you the bottom because there's coffee in it, but um, it does have their branding. This is still a little bit too hot, but I'm going to go for it. It's nice. It's fresh, crisp. Lots of fermentation going on. Lots of carbonic sort of, I don't know, winey stuff. Lots of fruits. It's funky. It's a funky coffee, guys. Why does that grinder cost so much? Commandante. Oh, my friend, this is the origami video. You have to watch the Commandante video. <laughs> Commandante has been around for a while. This is, um, they're not cheap. They're at top of the game at the moment. And, um, yeah, they produce really high quality coffee grounds, pretty much. When it comes down to it, it's a simple design. It's sleek. It's got nice details with the wooden finish and everything. Full stainless steel body, besides obviously the wood veneer. Um, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful grinder, and um, they're very popular at the moment. <laughs> All right, let's give this another shot. Super sweet, really sweet. Yeah, nice. Fellow owed. Can't justify it for the same cost as a fellow owed. Yeah, dude, 100%. Fair enough. You know, fellow owed's really cool because it's actually, we, we stock that as well. Um, we're here in Australia, so we stock both the Commandante grinder and the fellow owed. Fellow owed's really dope. It's, um, it's boxy, it kind of looks really cool. 
um, and it's super easy to use, like mainstream, you know, no issues at all. I think um, the Fellow Ode's biggest sort of uh, limitation at the moment would be the burst that it uses. It's just, it doesn't go fine enough for pour over. You're going to have to be doing five stage pours to get a similar result, brew time, taste, flavor profile. Um, and obviously this is just with the current burrs that they come with. Um, if you go ahead and actually look into the SSP burrs or all of that other stuff, um, then, uh, and yeah, absolutely, you're right. It is quite a messy grinder as well. Fellow Ed is a very messy grinder. This guy, not messy at all. <laughs> but I think that's just with like all travel hand grinders. Anyways, I'm going to wrap things up there. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube or somewhere else, subscribe. And um, yeah, if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, more live streams, content, um, yeah, subscribe and uh, see what we're about. I'll also have uh, my website linked. So if you're interested in any of these products, specifically the new origami dripper, the be matte beige in the small size um then yeah we'll have all those details down below have a great day night or day yep <laughs> we'll see you later thanks guys